Hydraulic roller cams. How high can you rev them? Well, we put that question to the test on an LS Wah! and a Wah! small block Ford. In this video, we're gonna answer the following question. Can you really rev a hydraulic roller camshaft to 8,000 RPM? Not only are we gonna answer that question, we're gonna answer that question twice. First on an LS application, then on a small block Ford. We're also gonna go one step further. We're gonna answer another question. Do you really need to have a short stroke motor to help it get there? Let's find out. So the question is, is it possible to run 8,000 RPM or more with a hydraulic roller setup? And we're gonna show you two different examples. The first one is an LS, and then we're gonna take a look at the Ford. Our first LS, and there's a video up on this motor already, is our D-stroked LS3. What, what I did was take an LS3 block, combine it with a 4.8 liter crank to make a D-stroked LS3. And to do that, I used a 6.3 inch Lunati rod and a custom JE piston. That buildup also included a set of Airflow Research 230 Cathedral Port heads, a Holley High Ram with two 950 HP carburetors. The reason I chose the carburetors is because as you introduce fuel at the top, you end up picking up more power. So I wanted to make power in addition to just revving this thing out to 8,000 RPM. In doing so, <laughs> we wanted to actually have some power production. So we also include a set of inch and 7 8 headers, a Moroso oiling system, you know, all the things to help this thing run and make power. And the first thing we did was put a camshaft from Brian Tui Racing in. It's a hydraulic roller, obviously. It was a 627 596 lift split, 243 262 degree duration, 110 plus one well, of 110 degree LSA plus five. So it was by no means a giant cam chef for trying to run to 8,000 RPM, but it was a good size cam. So equipped with that camshaft, this combination did indeed run to 8,000 RPM. And interestingly enough, it did so with standard travel um, lifters, not even LS7 lifters. These were just <laughs> like um, Speed Pro or Fell Pro lifters that we had just laying around, the kind that you'd go get at an auto parts store. So this thing made 607 horsepower out at 7,800 RPM and still out at 8,000 RPM was making 605 horsepower. So it was doing well. It had a little torque plateau. 466 foot pounds, both at 62 and 6300 RPM. So the combination worked fairly well. It revved out and made good power. But we also ran this with another camshaft. So we ran this with a cam from uh, Billy over at Comp Cams, and it did very well also. I told Billy, we just want this thing to run to 8000 RPM and make peak power up there. And he said, okay, we're going to get you this cam, and um, here's what it'll do. And it did exactly that. Now, the cam from Billy was a 627 or a 637 lift, straight up, both intake and exhaust, 253, 269 degree duration, so quite a bit more duration than the cam that the guys at BTR supplied, and a much wider LSA, 118 degree LSA. So, the wider LSA and more duration tend to push the power out, both tend to push the power out higher, and that's exactly what it did. It made more peak power, 633 horsepower. But <laughs> was basically only good from, you know, 7,400 on out. Below that, it made a bunch less power than the other cam that the guys from Brian Tui Racing. So it just goes to show you, both of these things ran to 8,000. As a matter of fact, we ran the one from Comp out to 8,200 just to kind of find out where the power peak was. It fell off pretty hard out here at 81 and 8,200. And that could be a function of, you know, valve control out there. I think in hindsight, I, I wish I would have run short travel lifters with this because... One thing is we tend to pick up how when we run short travel lifters. The same thing with running um, longer push rods. If you depress a standard lifter and kind of turn it into a, a, a short travel lifter, you get rid of all the aerated oil and, you know, that stuff can move around a lot with a short travel lifter. You don't have that. It acts more as a kind of as a solid roller lifter. But this combination worked out really well. But I did run one other test. And I, it's important to note that this thing didn't rev out to 8,000 RPM because it had a short stroke in it. It ran out to 8,000 RPM because it had the right camshaft and the right valve control on it. Now, we don't do that with excessive spring rate. You do it with the right spring rate, the right frequency of the spring matched with match with the camshaft. The camshaft has to have the right lobe design on it, not just lift and duration, but the right ramp and all that stuff. There's a lot of science that goes into that and they have to work like harmoniously together to run out of this RPM and obviously much higher than this too. It's possible to go higher than this. But here's an interesting test that we did. I ran a set of trick flow rec port heads on this. I was thinking, hey, we're running out at 8,000 RPM or more. We've got a big camshaft in it. Let's put rec port heads in it. And we did that 
and I, I ran a Recport uh, high RAM in the same carburation and stuff on it. Naturally, we had to jet it a little bit, but run with the Recport heads. You can see we've got in the red here, we've kind of got a sine wave here going where it's making the same and then less and then more and then slightly less. But here's a, <laughs> I only ran this one, this 78 or 7900, because I thought that we were past the power peak. But let me know what you think. I, this thing may have continued and done another sine wave here and actually gone back up as it went past 8,000 RPM. It certainly had plenty of flow. I mean, the ported trick flow rec port head had more airflow to offer than the uh, Airflow Research 230 Cathedral port heads. So it certainly had the airflow to support additional power, but it had obviously less compression. And the other thing it had going against it, it had a much bigger intake valve. So the bigger intake valve tends to be heavier and you lose valve control with that unless you, you know, uh, substitute a titanium valve or you have the right spring rate with that combination. So the right spring rate with a big valve rec port head is going to be different even though we have the same camshaft than it would be with a smaller valve cathedral port head. So this was an interesting combination and it worked out very well. But now let's take a look at our 8,000 RPM Ford where we didn't de-stroke the motor, we actually stroked it. Okay, here's a question for you guys. If you're trying to do an 8,000 RPM hydraulic roller small block Ford, which would you rather choose? A short stroke or standard stroke in this case, 302 Ford or a stroker 347? So what do you think? The 3 inch stroke or the 3.4 inch stroke? How many of you guys pick the three inch stroke? You know, the short stroke, get the thing to rev. You know, you know what I'm talking about. Well, we chose the 3.4 inch stroke. As a matter of fact, I chose a Dart SHP 347 stroker short block to run to 8,000 RPM. And the reason that I did that is specifically to show people that it's almost never the short block or the stroke or the board stroke ratio or any of that stuff that determines the RPM potential of a combination. It's almost always the valve trick. It's the camshaft, the cam profile, like the lobe intensity and the ramp rate and, and that working in harmony with the right spring rate and having things like titanium retainers and all that and all that stuff helps. And obviously in this combination, having the right lifter also helps because we're trying to do it with a hydraulic roller lifter, which is not the ideal choice, but it definitely, this combination shows it definitely can work. So what I did was pick a 347 Dart SHP short block. So it came assembled from dark, basically ready to go. It had the 3.4 inch stroke. It had a 5.4 inch rod. It had a forged flat top piston. So basically it was kind of, you know, <laughs> ready to party. And I really like these SHP short blocks. They've Not only have I run this 347, we did a ton of stuff with it, including at running turbos on and stuff. I also ran the dart block version of the, or the big bore version, the 4125 bore version of this 347, which puts it at 363 inches. And we made nearly 600 horsepower with that combination with the right heads and cam and intake manifold and stuff. And so these combinations work really well. They seal really well. I mean, they're just good combinations. So if you're looking for a short block, I mean, these guys don't sponsor the channel or anything like that. But I've run a lot of stuff and this SHP stuff has, has actually worked very well. And I'm glad that they helped us out with this test because the 347 worked really well, even though it had a bigger stroke than the 302, we were easily able to take this thing and, and go to 8,000 RPM with it. So with this Dart SHB short block, I topped it off with a set of Trick Flow high port 225 heads with, you know, appropriate spring rate and stuff. We had a, an Edelbrock Super Victor intake and a Holley 950 Ultra XP carburetor. We had inch and three quarter headers on it, which in, in hindsight, probably could have used maybe a little bit bigger header or at least a stepped header from inch and three quarter up to inch and seven eighths or maybe even a two inch header. So let me know what you guys think. What do you think? Maybe a bigger header on a combination that we're trying to run to 8,000 RPM with. Naturally, you had an MSE distributor. We had a good oiling system on it, which is critical for 8,000 RPM. We had a Mylodon pan and a windage tray and, and that stuff. So it, the combination would work really well. But one, obviously one of the important things was the camshaft. And on the cam, we chose a hydraulic roller from Crane, and it was a 640 lift, both intake and exhaust, 264, 272 degree duration. So it was a fairly healthy camshaft and 110 degree lobe separation angle. So this was a good combination and had plenty of potential. I mean, the trick flow heads flowed 
I think they flowed like 330 or 340, so enough to support way over, you know, in the mid 600 or 700 horsepower range. So there's plenty of head flow, and the Super Victor, you know, more than enough, and 950 Ultra XP, more than enough stuff. So let's take a look and see what happened. Here's our combination. We ran it from 4,000 to 6,000 RPM. I didn't want to <laughs> give it away right away on this. So let's take a look and see what happened. Were we able to run it to 8,000 RPM successfully? Yes, no problem. Although the thing that disappoints me about this combination is it made peak power a lot earlier than I thought. I mean, it made peak power at 72 or 7,300 RPM, and it didn't do too bad. It made 545 horsepower. But what do you guys think? I was expecting actually a lot more power from this combination and i'm not sure why it didn't make more power it had a good intake manifold it certainly had really good heads we had enough camshaft in this thing for this thing to run and make peak power i was thinking it would be kind of like the ls where it would make peak power out at you know 77 7800 rpm and kind of carry it fairly well but this thing fell off um we it, it revs fine to 8000 it still sounds good it was making 522 horsepower out at 8000 rpm but I think this thing made peak power a lot earlier than I expected. Um, and, and obviously, I was thinking that this thing should be a lot closer to 600 horsepower than, than not quite making 550. Because we've been able to do those kinds of numbers with a, <laughs> a much less concerted effort on a 347. So let me know what you guys think. And more importantly, I want you guys to... Um, post some or make comments and post some combinations that you guys have made out of 347s that have made good power and, and maybe let me know what you think uh, was what had gone awry with this combination. But it, I did this not specifically to make lots of power like I wasn't trying to make NASCAR kind of power. I did it to show that you could run hydraulic rollers up to 8,000 RPM and you definitely can. I mean lots of other guys have done it. But, but it also shows that the 347 stroke is not a limiting factor. It's almost always valve train just like with the LS. Let's get to our conclusion. Okay guys, what'd you think about the test results on our LS combination and on the small block four? Let's take a look at the LS first. Now I really like the idea of running a short stroke motor. Believe me, I'm all in. But I don't look at it as a de-stroked LS3. In fact, I look at it as a big bore 4.8 liter. Of course, there's an even less expensive way to do it. All you have to do is combine the six liter iron block with a 4.8 liter. That way all you have to do is swap over the 6 liter pistons onto the 4.8 crank and rods and put it in the 6 liter block. That's a much cheaper way than I did it, but a D-stroke LS3 or a big bore at 4.8, always good. How about the small block 4? Now I can't help but be a little bit disappointed by the power results, but even on that combination, using no special lifters or anything, we were able to rev, rev the small block 4 just like the LS all the way up to 8,000. Now sure, I wish it would have made a little bit more power, but hey, that's another test for another day. Thanks for watching guys. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff. Make sure to comment. Let me know your combinations that made even more power and I'll keep testing.